Well, it's been over three weeks since I ditched the iPhone for the S23 Ultra and I've got some words, but I want to set some expectations here. If you are looking for a spec-to-spec -spec comparison, this video isn't for you. But if you are specifically an iPhone user and have been thinking of switching to Android, particularly to the S23 Ultra, this is the video for you. Now, I have great things to say about the S23 Ultra as well as not so great things to say, but I want you to be very aware of the fact that this is coming from someone who has only used iPhones since the iPhone 4. My last Android phone was actually the first Samsung Galaxy back in 2009. So if you are an Android user, before you crucify me in the comments, at the very least, please hear me out because it gets pretty dicey in the beginning. I'll be sharing my initial experience with the S23 Ultra, what I think about it after three weeks of use, and why I think the consumers have it all wrong. Here we go. Mevo is an ecosystem for multi-camera recording and streaming with easy-to-use software that lets you capture high-definition audio and video. It's the simplest and easiest way to tell your story from as many camera angles as you need. The cameras connect to your Wi-Fi network and can be controlled using just your mobile device. Each camera is equipped with a low distortion lens and a built-in battery that can last up to six hours of continuous use. But the best part, everything is done wirelessly. This makes the Mevo camera system extremely portable and easy to set up. Perfect for live performances, food creators, events, podcasts, and fitness creators. There's actually a whole lot more that Mevo can do, so check them out and see how Mevo can help elevate your video creation. Very quickly, just to help my dear iPhone users get up to speed, the S23 Ultra is Samsung's flagship phone with the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 platform for Galaxy processor, which to my understanding was made specifically for this phone. Samsung claims that this is their fastest mobile processor ever with a little asterisk at the end. This phone also comes with five cameras, one of which can shoot up to 200 megapixels. It has a beautiful 6.8 inch AMOLED screen with 1440 by 3088 pixels and a 120 hertz refresh rate. Most of the exterior of the phone is made out of recycled materials, including the glass, but does not hurt the premium build quality in any way. The phone looks good and feels good, and it's just something that you have to experience firsthand, as I don't think photos and videos do it justice. You can think of the S23 Ultra as a larger souped up version of the S23, kind of like how the iPhone Max is to the regular iPhone, except there's much more to it. The Ultra carries a beefy 5,000 milliamp battery that provided me through all day performance. To fully experience the S23 Ultra, I decided to completely move my number to it and not just test it out using Wi-Fi. This is an important thing to note for later in this video. I was quite scared, to be honest, since I didn't know how difficult it was to move my eSIM from the iPhone to the Ultra. As it turns out, it only took a five minute phone call to my carrier and worked almost immediately. Now you should be aware that some carriers only allow you to transfer eSIMs a limited number of times. I'm in T-Mobile's network and fortunately they said that I can do it however many times I want, you know, in case I chicken out of this review. So my initial reaction was interesting because I didn't even recognize it. It was the fact that I was so afraid of leaving the walled garden that is Apple's ecosystem, something that I will also definitely be addressing later in this video. Setup was straightforward, and I like the fact that I can use either fingerprint scanning, pin code, or face recognition to unlock my phone. Having the fingerprint scanner underneath the screen is an elegant solution, but after three weeks, I find that I have a success rate of about 50 to 60%. Most of the time, I just get frustrated and use my pin instead. Face recognition does a better job at unlocking my phone, but still doesn't feel as seamless and fast as my iPhone. After the initial setup, I had to endure the painful process of relearning the gesture controls. It was very overwhelming for me. I set it up so that when I swipe from the bottom, it will take me back to the home screen, similar to my iPhone. What I didn't know was that if I swiped up from one of the bottom corners, it calls up Google Assistant. Even more confusion started to set in as I found that there was another app store aside from the Google Play Store. The S23 comes with its own Samsung Galaxy Store, which offers exclusive content for Galaxy phones. Everything was going smoothly until I noticed that just about every single app was asking me to rate it, including the two text messaging apps pre-installed. I was properly confused as they both looked like they functioned the same, except one of them was exclusive to 
Galaxy phones. So after defaulting to a preferred messaging app, I decided to look through the rest of the icons in the Ultra, which brought me to another problem that I just realized. I've gotten so used to the look of iOS that most icons on the S23 felt disconnected to me. Like the gallery icon, for example. It shares the same floral design as iOS, but because it was just a pink flower, I had zero idea that it was the gallery. I mean, they could have just chosen an icon of a picture frame, maybe? Now, I realize that this necessarily isn't the S23's fault, as the gallery icon on iOS makes little sense as well. I'm simply pointing out that if you plan to switch OSs, be prepared to be a little confused in the beginning. But you knew that already. Like the iPhone, the S23 has a handful of swipe gestures. The amount of swipe gestures can occupy an entire YouTube video, so I'll just talk about the ones that I've been using. Because I chose to hide the virtual menu button at the bottom, I have to swipe up from the middle of the home screen to bring up my app drawer. When I swipe down from the top, I summon the quick access panel. But if I want to reveal more or customize what I have on this taskbar, I swipe a second time. I can also get to this quicker by swiping down using two fingers. To the right, you'll see a barely visible cursor floating. This is the edge panel, which you can summon by swiping on the cursor itself. This panel is like an extra app tray that you can further customize and you can also move it around the screen. To close the app, you can either swipe from the bottom or swipe from the edge on either sides. This is also how we go back and forward on a web page, but I like that you can also use it to close an app as it feels handy on a large phone such as the S23 Ultra. So I gotta hand it to Samsung. I love the cameras on this thing. You get an ultra wide lens, a standard one, a three times optical zoom, and an impressive 10 times zoom. The photo quality is sharp and impressive, especially in low light, but I can't ignore the fact that it is also significantly slower to react compared to the iPhones which can be a little troublesome when I'm trying to take pictures of my kids because they're just always skittering about. The colors are also a bit more exaggerated, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially for 99% of users who just want to capture memories or share them on social media. Sometimes though, the photos come out a little wonky, which gave me the impression that the S23 Ultra has an equal tendency to impress and confuse me. Video quality is excellent, and I really loved using it with the 10x zoom. To be honest, I really had no desire to use the 50 megapixel resolution since the regular setting already looked good, but you know, it also felt a little bit sluggish. While the 200 megapixel camera was impressive for a camera phone, I just thought it was pointless as the limitations were mostly on the physical lens itself. And while the front facing camera was notably sharper than my iPhone 14 Pros, I still kind of prefer the way the iPhone processes the color. Also, I'm a little disappointed that the widest angle isn't as wide as the iPhones. I really, really disliked typing on the S23 Ultra's keyboard. The predictive text is just about as good at predicting the stock market and the keystrokes just did not feel accurate at all until I read somewhere that the default Samsung keyboard is kind of known for this. So I installed and switched to the Gboard keyboard by Google, which solved this problem. Still here? I hope so because I'm ready to talk about the things I love about the S23 Ultra. The S23 Ultra screen is something you need to experience yourself. The edge-to-edge -edge design really does a lot to make the experience much more immersive. Ironically, Apple Music looks so much better on the S23 Ultra. It just feels like it belongs in a screen like this. The 120 hertz refresh rate make using it feel snappy and just lightning quick. Far gone are the days when I used to think of non-iPhones to be inferior in terms of the UI animation and fluidity. Also, customizing your home screen with animated wallpapers only further emphasizes the beauty of the S23 Ultra's screen. I never knew how disruptive the iPhone's dynamic island was to my viewing experience until the Ultra with its punch hole design. I know I've always said I didn't care for the notch design on iPhones, but it really does make a difference. As mentioned, the S23 Ultra's build quality is stunning. I bought the green version and I am not disappointed one bit. As a matter of fact, the only disappointment I'm feeling is when I have to protect it with a case. At least I found this nice Alcantara case on Amazon that feels plush to the touch, befitting the luxurious characteristics of the S23 Ultra. I'll link this one in the description below in case you wanna try it out. The 5,000 milliamp battery delivered 
in terms of performance. I started the day with a 91% charge and 16 hours later after heavy use, I was left with 13%. Even more impressive was the super fast charging of the S23 Ultra. This is perfect for when you're getting ready for work. I plugged in my S23 Ultra at 55% battery and about 10 minutes later, it shot up to around 79%. It almost feels like the perfect pair to my Apple Watch Ultra. Speaking of pairing, I was able to pair my AirPods Pros to the S23 Ultra with no problem. The only difference I noticed is that the music doesn't stop playing when I take one earbud off and spatial audio doesn't work. The hidden stylus is called the S Pen, and it can be used to sign documents, take notes, mark up photos, or just generally used for fun. But probably my favorite feature of this phone is the side key quick launch button. Think of it as the action button for the Apple Watch Ultra. I have it set up to call up my Google Keep documents to help me quickly jot down notes for this review. Just like most aspects of this device, you can find different ways to configure this button. And I'm honestly wondering why the iPhone doesn't have a feature like this. Now, when you first use the phone, the default assistant is Samsung's AI, Bixby. I chose Google Assistant as my default since I trusted that it would work better for me. Using the voice assistant feature only emphasized how far behind the iPhone is in this regard. I've used this feature to launch apps, play music, check messages, make calls, you know, stuff that Siri can do, but with a much faster response time and a more natural way of talking. I couldn't really explain it, but it somehow feels better. This phone also has some experimental features such as multi-window for apps and pop-up views, so they may not work perfectly. However, in the brief time I've tried this feature, it really does take advantage of the S23 Ultra's large screen real estate. Pair that with the amazing battery performance and quick charging feature, the S23 Ultra becomes more than just a big phone. It's a productivity champ. With all the amazing things the S23 can do, the biggest problem is not the phone itself, but rather the apps. Popular social media apps are just incredibly buggy. I still have phantom notification marks on some of them, no matter how many times I check. It's so bad that I decided to simply disable them in the settings. And since I use Instagram a lot, I was disappointed I'm not given the option to schedule posts on the Android version of the app. And because of this, I just choose to check social media using my phone on Wi-Fi. Speaking of Wi-Fi, I mentioned in the beginning that I wanted to use the S23 Ultra with actual cellular service. And one of the main reasons is that I wouldn't be able to experience sending text messages the same way I use iMessage. For the S23 Ultra, I definitely needed to have cellular service to do this. I could make calls using just Wi-Fi, but from my understanding, this would also depend on your carrier. In other words, it's just something that would require a couple more steps just to get it to work. In essence, the iPhone feels fully functional, even if you're just connected to Wi-Fi. The S23 Ultra feels crippled without a cellular plan. Moving over to an Android device means that I don't receive iMessages unless I'm in front of my Mac or have my iPhone next to me at home. Otherwise, I would have to tell every single person I know on iOS to switch off iMessage on their devices if they want to text me. This would have driven me completely insane, except that I still use my Apple Watch Ultra with cellular service. This means that if an iMessage was sent to me, it will go straight to my wrist. Everything else goes to my S23 Ultra. So if you're coming from iOS, this is going to be your biggest problem. Apple has built an amazing ecosystem that works seamlessly across their devices. They have done such a good job building that walled garden that anyone who ventures out will definitely feel the hurt. But there's another problem, and this time it's not Apple or Samsung's fault. It's not hard to find people fighting over which phone is better. All you gotta do is read the comments on YouTube, maybe even on this one. But this is such a pointless argument as both phones clearly have their own strengths and weaknesses. The problem is the people, thanks mainly to their preferred way of doing things and brand loyalty. I recently met with some family and friends and the conversation turned towards me switching to an Android device. Mind you, I didn't bring this topic up. And as a matter of fact, I didn't even take my phone out of my pocket. It's simply because at some point during the previous week, some of them noticed a green bubble pop up in their messaging app. 
This elicited some uh, humorous text messages. I even got a long distance call from a friend overseas. I'm not kidding. Fact is, it doesn't affect their lives in a huge way, but it does feel like it got disrupted. And no one really likes that. In the last three weeks, I've upset more people than I have in the last three years. So just be aware that once you are out of Apple's ecosystem, not only will you feel it, but people will also constantly remind you of the fact. Today, I feel comfortable using the S23 Ultra. Despite having experienced some setbacks, I've forgotten about the little annoyances that came with the package because of how great the rest of the experience is. I've changed the icons to something more familiar to me just so that I don't have to confuse myself while I'm handling different devices. I've benefited greatly from the many choices of widgets available, and I regularly use voice commands, something I rarely do on my iPhone. And even though I've mapped out my S23 to be as efficient as possible, it doesn't stop the fact that it urges me on to keep exploring different ways to customize it. The iPhone works great as a tool. It's a sharp edged knife that you can rely on and it does a great job at delivering the task with the least amount of effort. And I think this is where Apple really shines with their devices. They make sure you're more focused on all the things that isn't the phone itself. So when you're done using an app or when your task is complete, you put the phone down and go about your day. The S23 Ultra begs to be explored and you'll have a ton of fun doing it. It does the things and iPhone does, some better, some not so much, mostly just in a different way. But you also have the freedom to try different things. Not all of them may feel refined or buttoned down, but variety is what makes it much more interesting. More importantly, it gives you the sense that the phone is conforming to your lifestyle and the way you do things, not the other way around. And this is where consumers like you and I get it wrong. One phone is not better than the other. It depends on your workflow, your way of going about your day or accomplishing a certain task. Sure, there are some hiccups along the way, but that's apparent on either devices. If you're still thinking of switching, this video shouldn't deter you. If anything, it should encourage you. After three weeks of use, I found myself checking social media and iMessages with my iPhone, but when I'm heading out, I grab the S23 Ultra because I know that it's going to be a great and interesting experience. Thank you for watching this video, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. I'll see you guys soon.